Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology, nice to see you back and we are here with the August horoscope for 2020 and the major thing which is happening this month is the conjunction of Moon and Venus, uh, sorry Venus and Rahu and uh, the day Moon will conjoin uh, will be very important and if you see here Moon, uh, so I am recording this at the night of today so if you see here this axis is very prominent you see today and tomorrow uh, Moon and Jupiter and Ketu are in Sagittarius and Venus, Rahu and Mercury are in Gemini. So if you check the degrees, uh, Venus is 0 degree 42 minutes and Rahu is around 2 degrees, right? So 2 or 4 whichever Rahu you take, true nodes or mean nodes. So the next two days are very crucial, 2nd, 3rd and 4th I would say, next 2 to 3 days. And then um, later on, almost after uh, 12 days around, Moon will also conjoin uh, this uh, Venus uh, in Gemini. So then you will see the real effects. So now because uh, Venus and Rahu are conjunct and Venus will be crossing Rahu maybe by 4th of August, the crossing will be done. So. Uh, therefore, the houses which Venus rules in your chart, you might feel that uh, there is an obsession or there is a level of confusion which has been involved uh, suddenly out of nowhere. So, for example, in this case, Venus is the yoke card because uh, the current Lagna is Aquarius and Shatabisha Nakshatra is rising in Germany now, Ingolstadt, where I am recording this. So Venus is lording the 4th and the ninth. so he is the Yoga Karak for this. Yoga Karak is a planet which rules one of the Kendras and one of the Trikonas. So therefore, uh, things related to the 4th house and the ninth house can come uh, out. So one of my friend, he is a Aquarius rising and I was just talking with him, he is also a very big astrologer. So he was telling me something very interesting what happened. Uh, he was telling me that suddenly his landlady, he stays here in, uh, in Germany. So he was telling suddenly his landlady called, landlady, see, fourth house. Suddenly the landlady called and said, uh, by this weekend, uh, she will have, she would have made a decision on whether she should extend his uh, room contract or not. So. There you go again, you see weekend, today is Saturday, tomorrow, when you see this video, it will be Sunday. So I don't know if she has made the decision yet, but uh, due to some legal problems, she said that uh, she cannot let him stay in this home. So you see this legality is here, you know, the ninth lord and this home is the fourth lord. I, I, I was really shocked when I heard this, so, di so direct it is. And then he was very, very, very concerned yesterday when I was talking. He said that suddenly she called. And the moment Venus had entered Gemini yesterday morning around that time or maybe today morning um, or yesterday night, I think. Um, that Around that time somewhere, uh, he came to know that uh, this, this has to happen so he was also very surprised that how accurate astrology is so therefore check the houses which um, venus rules in your chart and then we have a uh, sun in pushya nakshatra sun is in pushya nakshatra and pushya nakshatra is a very important nakshatra because it is the exaltation nakshatra of jupiter so uh, Jupiter gets exalted in first pada of Pushya Nakshatra ending in uh, Leo Navamsha, okay, 5 degrees of Cancer. So, therefore, 
whenever a planet like sun or moon transits pushya uh, they say it's a fantastic time to uh, start doing spiritual practices and because this is in the sign of cancer um, therefore if some of you are related to uh, meditation or or you want to start any kind of uh, reading of some literature like uh, which is connected to the bhakti tradition then it's a very good time because cancer shows uh, emotional connections okay and also because it's the original fourth sign so it's a very good time to connect with your mother so if you check properly what is what is happening sun is sun is alone there in cancer mm -hmm, interesting placement and because sun is alone so you might feel that uh, there is a greater degree of freedom so whenever whenever planets conjoin the sun you know uh, what happens uh, they try to modify your decisions okay so for example we know that mercury and venus are frequently conjunct the sun right so what mercury represents our relatives and our friends so let's take an example you want to go somewhere you may not go alone right you might go with your spouse or with your family uh, i mean with your friends sometimes or uh, you may also go with your parents uh, but primarily people when they go out uh, i mean not young kids but generally when people are after you know like matured or they are married 20s or 30s or 40s they primarily go with their friends or with their spouse not much with parents so this is why uh, this is why uh, i said because mercury venus are always around the sun they are very frequently conjunct the sun so they modify our decisions okay but now because sun is alone so uh, but <laughs> mercury is in 29 degrees is about to join the sun uh, tomorrow or maybe by night of today okay you see this 29 degrees so anyways uh, nonetheless it's not in the same nakshatra itself at least so mercury will need another at least 9 days i would say to no, not 9 days maybe 7 or 8 days at least to join the sun and and then it will again go combust and it will go ahead of the sun and yeah in the next 10 days or something like this 10 15 days so the thing is um, whenever sun is alone then it is a great time to start something yourself without depending on somebody else okay so this can be a very good opportunity uh, at the same time do not forget this saturn is aspecting the sun from capricorn right he is retrograde so saturn is retrograde and um, he will be retrograde the entire month of august if i am right and whenever a retrograde planet although sun has crossed the degrees if you check saturn is at 3 degrees and sun is currently at 15 degrees and it will go ahead only and saturn is moving backwards retrograde so the uh, the aspect is becoming weaker and weaker and weaker every day but anyways uh, because it is in the seventh sign from saturn it will still feel the effect of saturn so whichever house sun rules in your chart sun only rules one house uh, that house you may feel that uh, there is no growth uh, as per your expectations i don't mean to say there is no growth but depending on uh, your horoscope and your dashas you may feel that it would have been better if there were more connections in that area but because saturn shows limitations and because it is in capricorn and it's retrograde so it might show that there is some level of hard work which you might have to do because capricorn shows hard work and a uh, retrograde planet means something which you have already done but now you see the results are not coming because you didn't do it properly so so if if there is anything in your life currently regarding the house where leo is the house lorded by sun so for example in this case 
uh, Leo is in which house? It's in the seventh house. If you see this, okay. So, so this has to do with marriage, especially. Okay. So maybe if you are planning to get married, you may feel a bit frustrated because this transit is happening in your sixth house, and also Saturn is aspecting from the twelfth house. You know? So you may feel that oh, I am not able to find a spouse, or if you are already married, then this can. Uh, create some physical separation because of job or you know, work stress or something like this and that could create some anxiety which may give you difficulties in sleep which is the 12th house okay but anyways after 15th august this conjunction won't uh, this aspect won't be there anymore and uh, if you if you check uh, mars here mars is placed uh, he is there in Revati Nakshatra? Okay, it's a very interesting placement for Mars in Revati. So, whenever any planet transits <coughs> Pisces, uh, as I had said many times earlier, you will get a feeling that uh, things are going beyond your control and it's better to surrender to the universe. Okay, or if your horoscopes the size is not good then it can lead to confusion okay so it will depend on your chart what's going on so from there it aspects this uh, venus mercury rahu in gemini because mars aspects the fourth house so so because of the confusion regarding the houses which mars rules so uh, which houses does Mars rule here? He rules the 3rd and the 10th. Okay, it's a very important planet for Aquarius. So, this is happening in the 2nd house. Okay, so, uh, some some confusion related to travel or the career could be there. And the family could be involved in this. So the family could be a, the cause of this confusion. Okay. So now, uh, because of this confusion, Mars is you know Mars aspects Venus. So because of this, you know the fourth house and ninth house can be affected because Mars is a malefic. Remember that. Uh, I don't mean to say he's a functional or functional malefic or malefic, but uh, he is a natural malefic. Remember, remember that always. Okay. So, so I would say uh, the this month is a bit crucial for venus because uh, venus will be under this uh, difficulty uh, because of mars and rahu okay because mars will be aspecting uh, venus till that time for some time at least for the next 10 days because mars is at 24 degrees and mars is gradually slowing down because he is going to be retrograde in september in Aries and then he's again going to come back to um, Pisces okay so therefore be cautious about the houses which Venus rules and Mars is also the card for violence so too much aggression unnecessarily you might feel like showing but that will do no good to anybody actually okay and Jupiter is back to Sagittarius as uh, some time back and it is still retrograde uh, Purva, Shada, Nakshatra and if you check Ketu is also hovering around in the initial degrees of Mula, Nakshatra. So September Rahu Ketu will be changing signs and uh, therefore uh, currently these two are known as their exaltation signs Rahu for Gemini and Ketu for Sagittarius. So uh, this is a very amazing opportunity for the next 18 years uh, if you want to harmonize with the energies of Rahu and Ketu during this month of August. So Rahu can give you new ideas uh, but uh, Ketu can make you more spiritual and uh, if you meditate and try to channelize your energy, stabilize yourself by doing mantras, um, a bit of more spiritual practices than usual then you can harness this energy very beautifully actually and apart from this um, if you check Jupiter is also there with Ketu so this is very very good for spirituality at least the month of August and then let us have a quick look at uh, 
Okay, so 15th August, Sun is almost in Leo and he would have entered Leo by 16th morning. And yes, this is the day which I was mentioning in the beginning. Uh, Venus, Moon and Rahu are conjunct, aspected by um, Jupiter and Mars. Very interesting day, 15th. Uh, so 14, 15, 16th will be very interesting. Uh, so wherever the Gemini Sagittarius axis is falling in your horoscope, that axis will become very important. And uh, Mars has almost uh, entered Aries, I would say. Now let's check for 17th. It would have entered by then. Let's take 18th. Yes, so on 18th morning almost Mars enters Aries and Sun also enters 2 degree of Leo. Yeah, so Sun would have entered on 16th. So this is now uh, getting very interesting again because now Mars enters fiery sign. Okay, so as soon as Mars enters Aries, you will suddenly see the houses which Mars rules in your chart. They will become very lively, and you will want to make a decision. Aries is the sign of decision making. Okay, because it's the sign of the exaltation of the sun. So it's like saying you will be forced to make some decision regarding those two houses. Okay, so in this case. Uh, second house because now the ascendant has changed and the ninth house okay as an example I am saying and Mercury um, Mercury see Mercury has uh, also reached Leo <laughs> I mean Mercury is really moving very fast you know as usual of course so he had already crossed cancer and now he is in Leo and he has almost uh, crossed the sun. Alright, so this around mid of this month, this combustion will be there. So uh, we might feel that uh, the houses which Mercury rules in this case like 7th and the 4th house, uh, certain things are not very clear but it will be clear. Just be patient. Alright. And sun enters Leo and it is in Magha Nakshatra. So great time to uh, do something for the Pitris. And if you are about to make some major life decisions, then it's also a very good time actually. Because Mercury also is the Karaka for career. Okay. So let us check for the last day what is happening. there you go so venus almost will enter the sign of cancer by the end of august and then sun will be in purva falguni moon will be joined saturn in dhanishta nakshatra and mercury is almost about to leave leo Jupiter is still in Sagittarius, Venus is in last degrees, alright, so gradually as this month goes, the energies will shift from uh, this Gemini Sagittarius axis to Taurus and um, Scorpio because gradually, you know, the transits of Rahu Ketu will happen there, but still uh, Sagittarius will remain very prominent because Jupiter will be in Sagittarius for till uh, beginning of December uh, approx I don't know the exact dates okay so Mars has slowed down if you can see uh, in like 12 days he has only moved three degrees okay because he's going to be retrograde so the motion is slowing down okay so there you go Mars will be retrograde and Rahu Ketu will change signs and Jupiter Saturn will also come out of retrogression in the month of September uh, in, in my knowledge they should come out so therefore September will also be a very crucial month and this month will uh, could uh, this month could end with some level of um, 
disappointment why do i say this because uh, this moon and saturn will be conjunct uh, on the last day of this month so uh, do not worry do your best and leave the rest to god and he will decide what is best for you okay and uh, do not miss opportunities to hang out socialize uh, but do social distancing because purva falguni will be activated that time so purva falguni is specifically uh, related uh, why do i say purva falguni because sun will transit purva falguni okay and mercury would have definitely transited of course before entering uttar falguni all right thank you very much uh, if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website down in the description section and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him